this progress is the result of the commitment and drive of the people of this region. I saw that spirit today. We mentioned I started walking around a little bit. Such a nice day outside. And uh, we went to Faubourg Lafitte. We were in Treme, and we saw returning residents living in brand new homes, mixed income, new homes near schools and clinics and parks, child care centers, more opportunities for working families. We saw that spirit today at Willie Mae's Scotch House. After Katrina had destroyed that legendary restaurant, some of the best chefs from the country decided America could not afford to lose such an important place, so they came down here to help. Helped rebuild, and uh, I just sampled some of uh, her fried chicken. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Although I did get a grease spot on my suit. But that's okay. If, if you come to New Orleans and you don't have a grease spot somewhere, <laughs> then you didn't, you didn't enjoy the city. Just glad I didn't get it on my tie. We all uh, just heard that spirit of New Orleans and the remarkable young people from Roots of Music. When the storm washed away a lot of middle school music programs, Roots of Music helped fill that gap. And today it's building the next generation of musical talent. The next Irma Thomas, or the next Trombone Shorty, or the next Dr. John. There's, there's a Marcellus kid in here somewhere. How you doing? And I saw it in the, the wonderful young men I met earlier, uh, who were part of NOLA for Life which is focused on reducing the number of murders in the city of New Orleans. There's a program that works with the White House's My Brother's Keepers initiative to make sure that all young people, and particularly our boys and young men of color who so disproportionately are impacted by crime and violence, had the opportunity to fulfill their full potential. In fact, after the storm, this city became a laboratory for urban innovation across the board. And we've been tackling with you as a partner all sorts of major challenges, fighting poverty, supporting our homeless veterans. And as a result, New Orleans has become a model for the nation as the first city, the first major city to end veterans' homelessness which is a remarkable achievement. You're also becoming a model for the nation when it comes to disaster response and resilience. We learned lessons from Katrina. So the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers developed stricter standards, more advanced techniques for levees. Here in Louisiana, we've built a $14 billion system of improved levees and pump stations and gates, a system that stood the test of Hurricane Isaac. We've revamped FEMA, and I just have to say, by the way, there's a man named Craig Fugate who runs FEMA and has been doing extraordinary work, and his team all across the country every time there's a disaster. I love me some Craig Fugate. <laughs> Although it's a little disturbing, you know, he gets excited when there are disasters because he gets restless if everything's just quiet. Uh, but we, under his leadership, we've revamped FEMA into a stronger, more efficient agency. In fact, the whole federal government has gotten smarter at preventing and recovering from disasters and serving as a better partner to local and state governments. And as I'll talk about next week, when I visit Alaska, making our communities more resilient is going to be increasingly important because we're going to see more extreme weather events as the result of climate change. Deeper droughts, deadlier wildfires, stronger storms. That's why in addition to things like new and better levees, we've also been investing in restoring wetlands 
and other natural systems that are just as critical for storm protection. So we've made a lot of progress over the past 10 years. You've made a lot of progress. That gives us hope. But it doesn't allow for complacency. It doesn't mean we can rest. Our work here won't be done when almost 40 percent of children still live in poverty in this city. That's not a finished job. That's not a full recovery. Our work won't be done when a typical black household earns half the income of white households in this city. The work's not done yet. Our work's not done when there's still too many people who have yet to find good affordable housing. And too many people, especially African American men who can't find a job. Not when they're not when there's still too many people who haven't been able to come back home. Folks who around the country every day live the words sung by Louis Armstrong, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? But the thing is, the people in New Orleans, there's something in you guys that is, is just irrepressible. <laughs> you, have a, you guys have a way of making a way out of no way. You know the sun comes out after every storm. You've got hope. Especially your young people reflect hope. Young people like Vic, uh, Victor York Carter. Where, where's Victor? Victor York Carter. They, uh, stand up, Victor. I was just talking to Victor. I, I had some lunch with him. These these fine young men that I just met with. Stand up, everybody. See, see, these are the guys who, who I eat chicken with. Really impressive. Have overcome more than their fair share of challenges, but are still focused on the future. Yes or no? I don't want you to start getting embarrassed. So I'll just, I'll just give you one example. Uh, Victor grew up in the Eighth Ward, gifted arts student, loved math. He was 13 when Katrina hit, and he remembers waking up to what looked like something out of a disaster movie. He and his family waded across the city, towing his younger brother in a trash can to keep him afloat. They were eventually evacuated to Texas. Six months later, they returned, and the city was almost unrecognizable. Victor saw his peers struggling to cope, many of them still traumatized, their lives still disordered. So he joined an organization called Rethink to help young people get more involved in rebuilding New Orleans. And recently he finished a coding boot camp at Operation Spark. Today he's studying to earn a high-tech job, wants to introduce more young people to science and technology and civics so that they have the tools to change the world. And so Victor and these young men that I just met with, they've overcome extraordinary odds. They've lived through more than most of us will ever have to endure. They've made... They've made some mistakes along the way. But for all that they've been through, they have been just as determined to improve their own lives, to take responsibility for themselves, but also to try to see if they can help others along the way. So when I talk to young men like that, that gives me hope. It's still hard. I told them they can't get down on themselves. Tough stuff will happen along the way. But if they've come this far, they can keep on going. And Americans like you, New, the people of New Orleans, young men like this, you're what recovery has been all about. You're why I'm confident that 
we can recover from crisis and start moving forward. You've helped this country recover from a crisis and help it move forward. You're the reason 13 million new jobs have been created. You're the reason the unemployment rate fell from 10 percent to 5.3. You're the reason that layoffs are near an all-time low. You're the reason the uninsured rate is at an all-time low, and the high school graduation rates is at an all-time high, and the deficit's been cut by two-thirds, and two wars are over. And, 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 and nearly 180,000 American troops who were serving in Iraq and Afghanistan have now gone down to 15,000. And a clean energy revolution is helping to save this planet. You're the reason why justice has expanded, and now we're focused on making sure that everybody's treated fairly under the law, and why people have the freedom to marry whoever they love from sea to shining sea. You know, I tell you, we're moving into the next presidential cycle, the next political season. And you will hear a lot of people telling you everything that's wrong with America. And that's okay. That's a proper part of our democracy. One of the things about America is we're never satisfied. We keep pushing forward. We keep asking questions. We keep challenging our government. We keep challenging our leaders. We keep looking for the next set of challenges to tackle. We find what's wrong because we have confidence that we can fix it. But it's important that we remember what's right and what's good and what's hopeful about this country. It's worth remembering that for all the tragedy, for all the images of Katrina in those first few days, in those first few months, look at what's happened here. It's worth remembering the thousands of Americans like Michelle and, and, and Victor and Ms. Willie May and the folks who rallied around her, Americans all across this country who, when they saw neighbors and friends or strangers in need, came to help. And people who today still spend their time every day helping others, rolling up their sleeves, doing the hard work of changing this country without the need for credit or the need for glory, don't get their name in the papers, don't see their day in the sun. Do it because it's right. These Americans live the basic values that define this country, a value that we've been reminded of in these past 10 years as we've come back from a crisis that changed this city and an economic crisis that spread throughout the nation. The basic notion that I am my brother's keeper and I am my sister's keeper and that we look out for each other and that we're all in this together. That's the story of New Orleans, but that's also the story of America. A city that for almost 300 years has been the gateway to America's soul. Where the jazz makes you cry, the funerals make you dance. <laughs> the bayou make, makes you believe all kinds of things. <laughs> A place that has always brought together people of all races and religions and languages. And, and everybody adds their culture and their flavor into this city's gumbo. You remind our nation that for all of our differences is we're all in the same boat. We all share a similar destiny. If we stay focused on that common purpose, if we remember our responsibility to ourselves, but also our responsibilities and obligations to one another, we will not just rebuild this city, we will rebuild this country. We will make sure not just these young men, but every child in America has a structure and support and love and the kind of nurturing that they need to succeed. We'll leave behind a city and a nation that's worthy of generations to come. That's what you've gotten started. Now we've got to finish the job. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you. President Obama speaking for about 37 minutes there from the Sanchez Center in the Lower Ninth Ward. The first